What's going on guys? So in this video, I want to share with you nine of the biggest, most costly mistakes that you need to be avoiding if you're starting a dropshipping business. So these are going to be mistakes that I've made myself in the past, mistakes I see other people making. They're all going to be as valuable as the last one as well. So make sure you stay tuned until the end. And I can guarantee that if you avoid at least one of these mistakes, it's going to save you some time and it's definitely going to save you some money as well. So mistake number one is going to be setting yourself realistic expectations. Now, this is no fault of anybody's because it can be really easy to go onto YouTube, really easy to go into Facebook groups, on Twitter, whatever social media platform it may be, seeing screenshots um, from lots of different people making lots of money via dropshipping on Shopify, and it can lead to expectations of dropshipping being this get rich quick scheme. It's a really easy business model um, to make money in. It's really low barrier to entry, that is true. However, it's certainly not as easy as you probably think it is. Dropshipping definitely requires a bit of time, a bit of commitment financially um, and kind of mental resilience. Trust me, in the last, since 2016 I've been doing this, there's been some horrific nights of just worry basically not being able to sleep at night because i've been worried about how i'm going to pay that facebook ad bill um, or what i'm going to do about certain customers that i've got chasing me for certain orders so it's definitely not a case of putting a store together running some ads for a product and then walking off into the sunshine with millions of pounds it's certainly not that easy so if you don't make any money in those first couple of months don't be disheartened because if it really was that easy everybody would be doing it and everybody would be making lots of money but the harsh reality is that I would say 90% of people probably don't even get that first sale. A way of kind of summarizing this point is think of dropshipping as like a marathon, not a sprint. If you try and do everything way too quickly, you're gonna cut corners, you're gonna fall over at the first hurdle, you're never gonna to get to that finish line of actually meeting and making your goals. Mistake number two is automatically thinking dropshipping equals AliExpress. Now, I can understand why people make that judgment because I myself, I mention AliExpress a lot on this channel. Um, however, AliExpress is not the be all and end all it's somewhere you would go to to see if a product actually exists but then in my opinion you should be doing all you possibly can to try and source that product elsewhere when I say elsewhere, I basically mean agents. So CJ Dropshipping is a great one. They'll take care of a lot of things for you and they'll make sure the product is of somewhat decent quality. They are usually a bit more expensive, but they tend to do exactly what they say they're gonna do, whereas AliExpress can be a little bit up and down. To be fair to AliExpress, it has got a lot better since they've kind of got COVID under control. But again, I would still try and source your product anywhere else if possible. So you can go to places like CJ Dropshipping. Um, there's three or four different agents that I've worked with. I'm not going to name them in this video. Um, however, if you do a Google search for dropshipping agents, you'll be able to find them pretty quickly. And what you can also do is try and find them locally. So if you're watching this in the UK, go into eBay, see if you can source that product. There's a lot of people selling products on eBay that are also on AliExpress for two or three pounds more expensive. So you can definitely make it cost effective. However, this is a little bit more difficult to set up because you do need to kind of get the supplier on eBay on your side. Not many people will be that happy about you reselling their products at a higher price. However, some will be. It's just a matter of striking up conversation, asking the question and seeing what happens. At the end of the day, they can only say no. Number three is starting with too little money. Again, this is no fault of anybody's because you only have to do a YouTube search for dropshipping and some of the most popular videos with the most views are I started dropshipping with zero dollars and I made X amount. The fact is, to make money, you need money to make money, basically, with any business model. If you are on a low budget, then dropshipping probably is your best option because I don't know of many business models that require less money than dropshipping to actually get started in. You can have what comes across to somebody who's never even heard of dropshipping or never even heard of you. You can have a really professional looking business, like really legitimate and professional looking, and you look like you've been established for years and years if you know what you're doing with design work and that sort of thing for less than $100. Just going back to my original point though, you need more than $0. You would say anywhere less than 300 pounds and you're really really going to struggle the only way you will make it work with that sort of money is if you have the right product from day one with the right creative out to the right audience and you start making a profit from the very beginning this is going to be extremely difficult to do the harsh reality is this won't happen this way for most people so preferably the closer you can get towards that sort of thousand pound mark as a starting budget um, the better off you're going to be. 
Number four is reinventing the wheel. I see too many people trying to do crazy things when it comes to drop shipping um, in all aspects of it, to be honest, with like weird and wonderful ad creative. Sometimes they come off and they work really well. They go viral, they get lots of engagement. Most of the time they fall flat on their face. Unless you are experienced marketer and you understand your audience just stick to the basics same thing with the products as well just stick to the basics stick with something simple easy to source and is in demand and fit for purpose for a specific market and also same thing for your store as well i've done countless videos on store design and picking products that sort of thing so i don't need to make this video an hour long but just stick to a white background on your store with black text go for an easy to read font and remove any kind of connection to china as well so any kind of Chinese labels or symbols or broken English or that sort of thing needs to be removed from your store. Number five, a real important one that a lot of people don't talk about. I don't talk about it that much either, um, in fact. So maybe I'll do some videos on this down the line. Um, it's tracking your income and tracking your expenses. It can be so easy to just keep funneling more and more money into dropshipping and have no clue realistically of how much money you've made or how much money you've actually lost. This was a big mistake I made when I first started. Um, again, not to bore you, but I went from basically making about 20 grand a month um, within three, within four months, sorry, of actually starting dropshipping. At the time, that was unheard of money for me. And I just assumed that I was rich and had lots of money. So I was buying laptops and computers and just stupid, unnecessary stuff, which I just didn't need. And it wasn't until I started working with an accountant and we went through the numbers and it turned out I wasn't making half as much money as I actually thought I was. Plus I had taxes were just non-existent. I weren't considering taxes. So it kind of brought with it this whole load of headaches and things that I had to, to sort out basically and just become a lot more sensible and a lot more organized. So my advice to anybody watching this video is open up a separate bank account, whether it's a business one or a personal one, doesn't really matter to be honest put what you are willing to lose into that account, whether it's 500 pounds, a thousand pounds, and then make sure every penny you spend comes from that account, because at least then you'll be able to see the balance of that account go up and down, and you know everything is dropshipping related. If you have it in your personal account, and you see money go up and down every time you get a payout, but then your electricity bill, your phone bill comes out, and these are all things which are gonna skew your overall understanding of how much money you're actually making or losing. Point number six is not testing enough products. Too many people come to me and say dropshipping doesn't work when they've tested two products. I've met people who have tested. This is, again, through nobody's fault because there's people out there that will test one product and make a hundred grand with it. However, on the flip side of that, there will be people who need to test 30 products before they make their first 100 grand. Everybody starts in different place because everybody has a different kind of understanding and skill level. Dropshipping is a skill. Picking products, picking the right product to dropship is a skill. Marketing is a skill. Store design is a skill. So everybody starts from a different place. So everybody's results are going to be different. The most important thing to consider to make sure you avoid this mistake is that you need to decide whether you are 100% committed to this as a business. And if you are, it doesn't matter if it takes you 50 products to test, you keep testing until you find that one product because as cheesy as it sounds, you are just one product away from drastically changing your life for the better. It only takes one product. Number seven is I see too many people trying to do the same as everyone else. Again, it's through no fault of your own. If you are making this mistake, it can be easy to go onto YouTube, watch my videos and see some of the products I talk about um, see other businesses and how they're selling it and just try and replicate them and do it exactly the same way. In my opinion, you can do that to some extent. However, to give yourself the best chances of success, you need to be doing it the same way with a spin, with a better spin in a better way if that makes sense. Because again, the harsh reality is 90% of people make no money when it comes to drop shipping. So if you're copying everybody else, chances are you're gonna be copying that 90% and therefore you're gonna get the same results. So what you need to do is find people who it's actually working for, copy them to some degree, but just make sure you reword everything, different creatives, different store name logos, don't replicate something that's illegal. Make sure you copy it, or make sure you use it as inspiration. Now, I shouldn't use that word really, copy. Use it as inspiration, but put your own spin on it and just do it better than whoever you're using as inspiration. Number eight, this is probably one of the most common ones, and this is understanding the data. In fact, I would say 95% of speak to of people, they have no clue what conversion rate on a Shopify store they need to be aiming for. They have no idea what the data means on Facebook. So when they run some ads for a particular product, if they don't get 
the results they're hoping for back. It leads them stuck, leads them thinking dropshipping doesn't work or some form of a scam. When in reality, that's just not the case. It's perfectly normal to fail on a product, but unless you understand what the data is and what it means and how to manipulate it, then you are gonna be stuck and not know what to do. However, if you do understand the data, then you do know what to do next. When it comes to being successful at dropshipping, in my opinion, the proof, this is where people really prove what they're made of and how well their understanding is of this business model because for you to be successful at dropshipping, you need to understand what conversion rates are and what you need to be aiming for, how to manipulate them. You need to know what a CPC is, what a CTR is, what a CPM is. You need to know what the quality rankings mean and again, how to increase those and make those better. Finally, number nine, then probably one of the most important ones so if you're stuck with me um, I'm glad this is waiting for the perfect time or the perfect product too many people spend months and months and months watching YouTube without taking any action there's never going to be a perfect time if you were going to start at the best time possible it probably be about now or a couple of weeks ago because we're recording this at the very beginning of Q4 however the perfect time probably doesn't exist. Well, the perfect time is now or a week ago, as they say. So the perfect time is now. Don't wait for whatever commitment or whatever project it is you're waiting to finish. Just get started now because the best experience you'll get running the business is actually running the business and not by watching YouTube videos. This also happens with products as well. Too many people wait or try and find a product that has zero bad points or zero negative points about it. But the truth is with every single product out there, there's gonna be negative points about it. So in my opinion, there's no such thing. No matter what products you look at, even the most successful products in the world there's bad points about every particular product so try not to wait until you find a product that ticks every single box just try and find a product that your gut tells you is okay or that the data tells you that it's okay or potentially a product that I've featured on my channel. I stand by all the products I feature on my channel as great products. So just give them a go. Dip your toes in, start with small budgets. Um, and like I mentioned earlier in the video, you're only one product away from drastically changing your life for the better and you never know what's gonna happen. So just give it a go and the worst thing, what's the worst thing that can happen is you lose maybe 100, 200 pounds. And so with that being said then guys, that's the nine biggest mistakes I see people making as well as have made myself i really hope you've stuck with me this long um, that way you've seen all the nine mistakes and i stand by what i've said in this video if you avoid at least just one of these it will save you some money and it will save you some time as well thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one